Hey, Hemi here with part three, which is a continuation of our look at cell communication and how some cells signal other cells. This is part three of the video series uh, where we are looking at the reception of cell signals. Uh, in this video, we want to look at tyrosine kinase receptors or TKRs and also uh, ion channel receptors. Um, and again, this is taken from Campbell Biology is where a majority of these notes and these slides come from, so I have to give them credit. In the last video, we talked about GPCRs, um, G protein uh, coupled receptors uh, that use G proteins and signal a transduction pathway when they receive a, a signal from the cell. Uh, now we want to shift our attention to RTKs, receptor tyrosine kinases. Uh, kinases are enzymes that take phosphate groups, usually from uh, ATP, and add them to some type of protein. In this case, it's going to be the amino acid uh, tyrosine. Okay. Uh, so hence the name tyrosine kinases, because uh, we're adding phosphate groups. Uh, the receptor tyrosine kinase can trigger multiple signal transduction pathways at once. Uh, this is one difference uh, that we note between how RTKs work uh, with the G protein uh, channel receptors, GPCRs. Okay, so this is one difference that we will kind of note that this can uh, RTKs can trigger multiple pathways uh, once that signal is, is received and moves inside the cell. Uh, abnormal functioning of RTKs is often associated with cancer. Uh, if you remember, cancer is abnormal growth where you get a clump of cells uh, and it becomes disruptive to uh, other cells around them. And before we just learned about, hey, these cells don't respond to cell signals to stop growing. Okay, now we're looking at, okay, how does that mess up? Where do those signals come from and how do those occur? Well, it's through uh, receptor tyrosine kinases because uh, they often will uh, trigger the cells to <clears throat> reproduce or once they touch each other, uh, to stop reproducing, stop making more cells. Uh, and down here, these multiple pathways, I kind of put a, a diagram down here, whereas you have insulin, uh, can, trigger, can trigger, look at all these different pathways here uh, that can be triggered uh, with, with the release of the hormone insulin. So this image is just to kind of show you um, kind of the multiple pathways that it can take, the transduction pathways it can take once inside the cell. Uh, when we look at the actual functioning of the site, we can see up here, here's step one up here. So cytoplasm inside the cell out here, extracellular <clears throat> outside. Here's our signaling molecule or our ligand. And you see that the RTKs <clears throat> are they have kind of an alpha helix, sort of like the GPCRs did, uh, that are within this within the cell membrane here. Uh, and then they have these protein uh, receptors that hang down inside the cytoplasm that have the amino acid uh, tyrosines hanging off of them, okay? And up here is the binding site then for the ligand. In step two, uh, when a signal okay, is released, uh, here come the ligands, uh, some kind of signal from other cells. Uh, when they bind to the receptors, uh, this over here in the step one, these things are, are separated, okay? So we call them the monomers. When they receive signals, these things will join together to form what we call a dimer, okay? Uh, now it's activated and it's a dimer. Uh, sometimes they actually will form like big clumps of these um, ligands, uh, these TKRs, will sort of a whole bunch of them clumped together, and that's some current research right now, uh, which leads to step three. Once they're activated, okay, so up here, this is now activated. This is now activated, uh, but it hasn't, it's not phosphorylated yet. So remember, kinases are enzymes that take phosphate groups and add them to a protein. Uh, and so in this case, tyrosine kinase, it's going to take, you notice that there's one, two, three, four, five, six tyrosines here. 
So it's going to take six ATP, okay, and it's going to break the ATP down into ADP and inorganic phosphate groups, and it's going to add those phosphate groups to the tyrosine, okay? So now it's not just, this is like almost like up here, it's partially activated, which once now it's phosphorylated, it's fully activated. And what that does is it leads to step four, where we have now these active relay proteins. Once there's a phosphate group there, these, at, these relay proteins will come in, will bind, okay, will bind to the RTKs, and it activates the relay proteins and now we can see it will start to cause a cellular response. And depending which relay proteins bond here and how many uh, are the different cell responses that it can occur. Okay, so we see they work a little bit different. In the GPCR, you had this G protein that was moving back and forth through the membrane, uh, activating some kind of enzyme that would then start a pathway. Here you have the RTKs kind of clumping up together to form a dimer, and they get phosphorylated, okay, because they're kinases. And once we add the phosphate groups to the tyrosine, it's going to then attach to other sort of relay proteins that are floating around in the cell, and this will then cause the signal transduction pathways uh, to take place within the cell and cause some kind of cellular response or multiple cellular responses. The third type of a cell membrane receptor is a ligand-gated ion channel, sometimes known as LICs or LGICs. Okay, you'll sometimes see them abbreviated that way. Uh, they are receptors that act kind of like gates. Uh, reminds me of the farm uh, where we open or close gates to let our cattle through. Uh, this is going to have some type of protein receptor uh, here in the membrane. So here you see a bunch of alpha helices, and they're going to have a specific binding spot for a ligand. And they're just going to, when that ligand, you know, signal molecule binds to that, it's going to open up and let a bunch of different uh, ions through there. Uh, calcium, uh, some common ones are calcium, uh, sodium, uh, potassium, uh, sometimes negative chloride ions are all ions that use these LICs, the LGICs. A little bit how these work. Okay, here's step one. Uh, here's our LGIC, our ligand-gated ion channel receptor is right here. Notice that the gate is closed because there is no sing signal bond here. Okay, when uh, there is a signal that uh, a ligand that comes and it has a specific bonding spot for that here in, in uh, <clears throat> step two, notice when that bonds, it causes a conformational change or a shape change in that protein. That opens the gate. Okay, now here our ions are able to travel through that transmembrane protein here. Uh, inside here, that's going to cause a change in concentration and that change in concentration <clears throat> will often lead to a cellular response <clears throat> okay when uh, you no longer need that response when the ligand is removed okay that gate is closed and now the ions uh, can't get through there anymore and sometimes there's actually uh, like sodium potassium pumps uh, that will <clears throat> kind of reverse that flow uh, these are important in nerve impulses and stuff like that. When a nerve impulse happens, gates will open, uh, ions will flow in, and it'll trigger the next gate, the next gate, the next, the next, the next, the next, and it flows all the way down the axon. Uh, and then when it gets to the end is where you get things like uh, the RTKs, where you get a, <clears throat> a neurotransmitter response. Okay, the final type of receptor in the first step of cell signaling reception are what we call intracellular receptors. Uh, the previous three we looked at are transmembrane receptors. They're in the cell membrane. Uh, these are where the signals uh, go directly into the cytosol or the nucleus of the target cells. 
Uh, so they have to be very small or hydrophobic, remember, to go through the phospholipid bilayer because you remember the heads with the two tails. Okay, the tails are hydrophobic. Uh, and so in order to pass through there, they need to be hydrophobic or really small molecules. An examples of this are uh, steroids, uh, thyroid hormones, um, also nitric oxide, okay, which is NO. Uh, again, very small molecule can go through. Uh, that is used a lot in our cardiovascular system uh, to decrease blood pressure and increase blood flow. Uh, and activated these hormone receptors, once they hit the receptor inside the cytoplasm or nucleus, uh, they will often act as transcription factors, turning on a specific gene, and we'll look at that here in a second. Okay, for our example here, we're going to be looking at the hormone uh, testosterone, uh, which is hydrophobic, so it is able to pass through the plasma membrane, uh, and it will pass through because it's hydrophobic. So here's our plasma membrane, and it can pass right through there and hit a receptor protein uh, here in, our, in the cytoplasm of the cell. There we go. Get the slide to change there. <laughs> uh, when uh, the hormone hits the receptor protein, it'll cause a hormone receptor complex, again, which often will form some kind of uh, conformational change in that protein. Uh, and that will often find its way into the nucleus of the cell. Uh, once there, uh, the hormone receptor complex will act as a transcription factor. Okay, remember transcription factors uh, help transcription. Uh, so if you think back to bio one, all our genetic code is on the DNA, okay, and then it is transcribed. Transcription, it gets made into mRNA, because remember the DNA is the master molecule and it does not leave the nucleus. Uh, and then the mRNA leaves the nucleus uh, goes to the ribosome where it's made into a protein, okay? And that is the step of translation, okay? Uh, so remember, transcription factors will actually take the DNA at a certain gene and kind of bend it so it exposes the promoters of that gene uh, so that uh, MR or RNA polymerase can come in and read those genes better and it speeds up the process of making. So when that the transcription is sped up, okay, that makes a whole bunch of mRNA molecules uh, which then leave the nucleus and go out to the ribosomes. So here's a bunch of ribosomes, these little dots out here uh, that are making these new protein products. So essentially the in this type of cell signaling, uh, when they come pass through the cell membrane, okay, the receptor hormone receptor complex uh, actually acts as the transduction pathway. Uh, so we're getting reception and transduction kind of all in one respond, all in one step uh, in order to cause some type of response down here or some type of protein product that is made. Uh, so that transduction step is included kind of in the reception as it moves in the cell. And this kind of concludes our, um, the step one of reception of a cell signal. Uh, so the next set of videos, we're gonna look at step two, uh, which we kind of just mentioned here, which is transduction. Okay, once that signal is received by a cell, how does it cause a response? Uh, how is that message passed on within the cell?